All right, I was feeling a reset. It's kind of that time of year for a reset. Quarter one, let's check in on the goals I made in January. Let's see if I'm on track. Let's see what needs to pivot and change. Um, I'm not gonna go into stats, but I did wanna look at like my genre breakdown since that was like kind of part of some of my goals. And then I wanna look through some of the quarter one releases and which ones I don't think I'm gonna be reading, which ones I might read and which ones I still have left to read. Just kind of like, I don't know. It just seems like a fun little reset of everything, checking in, seeing how I'm doing, especially since this is just a really weird reading year for me. So um, I believe I said 100 to 120 books for the year and I'm on track for that. I think I could be pushing myself a bit more, which leads me to like the second thing where I wanted to balance challenges and reading for fun a bit more. And I've done like one challenge this year um, where like I read a bunch of the Nebula shortlist books and let myself hard DNF. And I think I just need to be pushing myself a tiny bit more. Um, I, I was over concerned that I was going to be doing more chore reading because that's what I ended up doing at the end of 2023. And I really haven't been doing that, which is good. But it also means I have a book that's been on my currently reading list for like two months. And I that, it, that stresses me out. It just stresses me out. I need to just like hunker down and put in the work and finish that book <laughs> or decide I'm not reading it. One or the other. But like, I just think I need to challenge myself a smidge, a smidge more. Um, but in the spirit of those challenges, I have been better at doing what I wanted to do with Patreon because I wanted to put a lot more energy into that this year. And I feel like I am. I, we've had some live shows. I've been putting up more vlogs. We did end up doing our monthly reading sprints are always on the first Sunday. We always usually have maybe another one throughout the month, although this past couple months have been a little busy. But there's always one on the first Sunday. And I'm really happy with that. I really like that kind of stand in spot. I'm really happy with how my last couple vlogs have turned out. I had like a spoiler vlog for the first book into like um, in the Terra Ignota, it's to like the lightning. And I love that book. So it was really fun getting to like spoiler vlog react to it, especially as a bunch of people were reading it. So that was super fun. They got the full vlog for the Nebula shortlist. And I enjoyed doing that because like I've kind of said before, vlogs for the main channel stress me out. <laughs> I don't know why they stress me out. So doing it for a smaller audience for Patreon is like better for me and lets me scratch that like creative itch because I always like have FOMO. Like I want to be that vloggy girl. But like I just recognize that it doesn't bring me joy most of the time. So I'm like, I'm not that person. So that's going pretty well. Um, so I think otherwise it's just more like I need to figure out how to get myself into the reading headspace more often because I find myself struggling to do that a little bit and I'm trying not to push it too hard. Um, like, so for example, Wednesdays are super busy for me this semester. Um, and so when I come home, my brain is just like struggling to turn off, struggling to focus on something. So instead of forcing myself to read, I've been trying to do other things like maybe have a movie planned or I'm trying to go to these new Zumba classes or something, something that doesn't need my brain to be all in, but I'm still like enjoying that time because Currently, it's not even like relaxing <laughs> doing the nothing. I'm just like, my brain's on, my brain's on. And it's like, I need to slow down, I need to slow down because it's just been going all day. I'm sure you guys kind of can relate to that on those days where it's just like, you've been going and then you accomplished all your tasks, but you still can't get your brain to realize, okay, you're done now and now you can relax. Like getting to that state of relaxation on Wednesdays isn't happening. So for example, in that case, I'm not trying to force myself to be able to read then. I'm just recognizing that's not always in the cards. Um, and Thursdays and Fridays are like bigger reading opportunities for me. So I'm trying to take advantage of those and like starting my day off reading. I have definitely been able to incorporate more audio booking. So that's been good. But this is more like my physical reading time is what I'm struggling with. Audio booking time, pretty easy. Like after I film this, I'm going to go out and work in the yard and listen to an audio book I'm excited about. Like that's pretty easy, but I'm kind of missing my like sink into a book in the blankets, physical reading time, if that makes sense. All right, other things that I talked about that were more for physical and mental health. Um, I would say that I'm doing pretty okay on being physically active based on my goals, but um, I have taken steps to maybe make it a tiny bit better for me. Um, and that is taking Zumba classes, which I love. I've always loved Zumba classes and this was so serendipitous. Um, so I used to take them here in Cleveland um, when I would come home for, from college for spring, summer break or winter break, I would use her gym and they had Zumba classes and I loved that instructor, but then she left. And then I went to Boston and I found some Zumba studios I liked in Boston, but it was very hit or miss and then COVID and all that jazz. When I moved back here, one of my best friends, she goes to a Zumba studio. I'm like, cool, I will come along. And it's that instructor that I really loved from like 10 years ago. 
So really excited to be going there. They also have more than Zumba classes that I'm like paying for. So I might try and do yoga there because as we talked about earlier this year, yoga is really good for me. Also, it's just like the nice social interaction. I find with my mental health, a tiny bit of social interaction is really beneficial. Um, so that's been good. And then speaking of mental health, I haven't worked in that workbook, but I did find a therapist I like, and I have been using her and it has been very helpful. So I'm gonna call that big success. We are going towards something good <laughs> there. I'm so glad she's a good fit. I'm so glad it works within our benefits package. So yeah, and if you're not in the United States, it's just really hard to find doctors and caregivers in your benefits <laughs> that work for you as well. So yeah, so I think I'm doing generally well. Now in terms back to the book, goals. I wanted to be reading more science fiction this year and more horror and just like switching it up. And I did look. And for the most part, like still 10 of the things I read, I would consider just fantasy. Um, and then seven of them were science fiction, three were horror, two were some sort of romance. They were probably speculative romance, but like their genre placement in my head is romance. And then I had one other. Now, I think the science fiction and horror are pretty good. I should be trying to increase that horror number, I think. I just need to like watch more horror book two purse and stuff like that and figure out what might fit for me because I do really enjoy reading horror. Like I, I truly do. It's a very unsettling time. It's always like, and it's, it's fun for me because like I don't, I'm a newbie. So a lot of its tropes and conventions are new to me, which is exciting. I like new things, new things excite me. Um, but the, the big, big elephant in the room is I really wanted to make sure I was still reading non-speculative things, even though I wasn't in my book club anymore. And I've read one nonfiction for Jess Owen's book club. <laughs> so that means right now I'm going to list three books that I might read in this next quarter that are non-speculative. And then when we go through the quarter one releases, I want to highlight some books that are non-speculative that came out this year that I might be interested in. And hopefully having those books on like the forefront of my mind, I will pick them up. Because like, I think I said it as just like read six to eight in the year, which like isn't horrible, but like I'm really doing nothing. So I need to like pick that up a tiny bit. Um, So those three books that are not new releases that I might get to one. So the first one is just because like I have a copy of it. It keeps being recommended to me by people in my real life. And I it's, it's hard because sometimes I'll be recommended something in real life and I'll feel like I don't think that's going to be for me. Like I know that's just like a super popular book and you're recommending me a thing you know about because it's a super popular book, but I just don't know if it'll be for me. But I have a copy because I was gifted it for Christmas and I might have a good time with it. And that's Lessons in Chemistry, which is, I believe, a historical fiction, satire, uh, women in STEM being wronged by misogyny, that sort of thing. And it could be cathartic. It could be funny. My mom laughed a lot while reading it. Um, I just don't know if I'll be in the right headspace. I don't know if it'll be for me. Um, two that I'm a little more excited about. One one is one Ryan read and also Jashana really likes. And I think it counts for this in Sphere because for the most part, this is not shelved in a genre fiction location of the bookstore. And that's Shadow of the Wind, which is the start of a series, but I think a lot of people can read the first book as a standalone. Ryan really loved it. I think it's more historical fiction, again, with maybe some light magical realism elements. Um, I don't remember what it's about. I think it's about a book that is disappearing or maybe there's only one copy of it and that's like the mystery. I'm basing this off the fact that it's always been really highly recommended and Ryan read it and it's one of the few books that like is this long. It's a pretty long book and he read it within like weeks which for him is like really fast which means it's really engaging because he actually can read faster than me. <laughs> it's just a matter of if he cares about a book enough to read it. Um, and then the last one is one I've just been really curious about because it got a lot of good buzz last year. And this is Demon Copperhead which is another big in. Um, but I've just been curious about it. I haven't read the book that it's sort of based off of or influenced by, but I don't think you have to, which I think is David Copperfield, I think. Um, but this one's been really intriguing to me as well. So these are three non-speculative books that I may or may not get to in this next quarter, but I just figured, okay, I'm at the point where I'm not actually picking these things up. So I need to put some intentionality out in the world and that's just not enough for its own video. So it's going in here. So now into some quarter one releases. Let's start with the things that I do not plan to read, that I've seen some buzz about, that maybe I could have been convinced to read, but I'm just like, whatever. Um, An Education in Malice. I haven't even read A Dowry of Blood, which is apparently the big favorite by this author, I think. I haven't seen a good review for this book, so I'm really not that interested in it. Uh, Map of the Other Lands, I have seen good reviews for, but nothing has really sparked my interest enough to be like, yes, I want to go back. 
I liked the Encyclopedia of Fairies, um, but I didn't, I, I felt like I got what I got in. I, well, I felt like I got what I wanted from that story with those two characters and their interactions. Like I had fun. And so I guess maybe it's not a never say never. I could see a scenario where I'm doing a challenge and it's on a list and I pick up the audiobook. Like it's not gonna be a trial if I have to read it. But in terms of my money, my time, I'm not in a challenge, I'm not picking it up. A similarly, Feybound, I, I really do wanna try something by this author, but I, I feel like we might not be a good match, but if I'm gonna try something, it's gonna be the final strife. Feybound, I just think, doesn't have the tropes that I like and it's leaning a bit on comfortable tropes. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having comfortable tropes or being predictable in your storytelling, but it's typically not what I go to fantasy for. And if I do go to fantasy for that, it has to be like my trope salad and stuff like that. Um, I don't know anything about this book other than people were showing covers of it a lot. And this is City of Stardust. First of all, I just really dislike City of Blank fantasy book names. I've read plenty of them. Plenty of them are good. Looking at you, City of Brass. Looking at you, City of Stairs. But I still hate it as a naming convention. I cannot stand it. Um, so that already kind of puts me off. And I don't think anyone's had anything to say about it, good or bad. I've heard nothing. So I'm probably not going to pick it up. And the last one's kind of sad, but like, I also really wasn't looking for it. Um, this is A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Weisel. I really liked their young adult duology, We Hunt the Stars, or We Hunt the Flames, We Free the Stars. I really liked that. I thought that was really fun. A great version of what it is. I've not seen people who even like that duology, like this book. And then it has that dreaded comp of it's like Six of Crows. And I'm like, I haven't read Six of Crows. I know everyone's like, you should read Six of Crows. But like, it is so hyped and it is such a weird comp. And what it normally means is heist and multi POV. And I don't really like that except in very specific instances. <laughs> so I really wasn't going to be reading this one anyways. And then it's, it really has had very middling to bad reviews. So probably not. Now, my maybe category is probably the largest category. Um, because I'm trying to make my yes category like, yes, I have plans for this. So some of these will be non-speculative books that I could see myself maybe grabbing for, and some of these are speculative. Um, one that's on my radar because of Tammy, and Tammy tries to read, is The Emperor and the Endless Palace. So apparently this book has been marketed as fantasy romance, but it's not really a fantasy romance. And it has stakes. And I'm interested because it made Tammy emotional and had like a really strong pivot from like a good book to a amazing book by the end of it. I mean, I'm very curious about books that can do that for a reader, especially because Tammy is pickier than me. Tammy has a much pickier taste, like a three star from Tammy is like a four star from me sort of thing. So the fact that this became a five star for Tammy is like high praise. Um, but I have seen middling reviews for this as well. So that's why it's like kind of on the maybe. I don't really know what it's about. Like I know it's gonna have romantic elements because that's why it was marketed as a fantasy romance. But I also know that if you read genre romance, this does not fit the bill. So I'm just, I'm curious about that. Um, there is a new Kristen Hanna out. I've only read one Kristen Hanna, but I did adore it. Um, that was um, The Great Alone is what I've read and I really liked it. And this one's called The Women and I believe it's based off Vietnam, the war in Vietnam specifically, um, which like, I always get nervous because like, I do think I'll like it, but I don't know if she's the person to tell that story, which is why this is very much a maybe. Like, I think I would like the book, but I almost would rather read this type of story from like a Vietnam Vietnamese author, Vietnamese American author. And I have read books about that. Like, um, what's it called? Mm -hmm. I won the Pulitzer Prize, but I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the name. I think I'll have a picture here, but that was a story about Vietnam that was woof. It was a, it was a time trigger warnings for graphic torture scenes <laughs> was the time. But like, I do like Kristen Hanna's writing. So maybe could happen. Um, Wandering Stars, I did not know this was out. I don't know what it's about, but it's by Tommy Orange. One of the few contemporary books that I own is by Tommy Orange, who is an indigenous author who I really like how they write, how they bring communities together. So I'm, that one's pretty high on my list. Like I put it in maybe because I know nothing about it other than it's the author, and this is an author I like. Um, but like, it's, it's a high maybe. It's like a, ooh, I'm excited that I discovered that while preparing for this video. So yay. Um, another um, work by an author I've read before is The Fox Wife. I've read, what was it called? The Ghost Wife? Was it also a wife book? Unsure. Uh, that one was based in Malaysia. I don't know what, where this one is based. And I think this is a tiny bit more speculative, but maybe more in the magical realism folklore kind of vein. I don't know if I'll read it. 
I have nothing against reading more by that author, but I only liked The Ghost Wife. So I don't know. And then <laughs> this one's random. This is a contemporary romance and I'm only it's only on the maybe because it's literally in my living room right now. Like I my friend took it out from the library, read it in a day and gave it to me in case I wanted to read it. And that is When Grumpy Men Sunshine, which is just a fan fiction of Ted Lasso. Like the the the, the it's yeah. I think the character main female love interest is not Kylie, but like the grump is Roy. There is a Ted Lasso character. And like, I mean, I love Ted Lasso the show. So we'll see if I end up picking it up. It's just a matter of like time. I have like no time ever, but it's literally in my living room right now. And it could happen because contemporary romances take me like no time to read and they're very fun. Um, and I believe that came out in the first quarter because I'm trying to focus this on first quarter, if you notice, like, and like that's wibbly wobbly because like, I'm trusting Goodreads lists and Reddit and stuff like that. So who knows? Um, another low, maybe low, maybe. And I don't even know when I'll ever get to it. It's House of Flame and Shadow because like, I really didn't like House of Sky and Wrath. I really didn't. I really love House of Earth and Blood like oh, so much. I just want more House of Earth and Blood, but apparently House of Flame and Shadow is not like House of Earth and Blood. So not very keen to pick it up, but I'm also a completionist and never say never. So this is a very low, maybe. Um, when the moon hatched, this is a fantasy romance, I believe, or maybe it's just a fantasy, but I saw it talked about on Britney's channel and she really liked it. So I'm very curious about it, but I might wait till there's other books out in the series, but this one has me cautiously like, Ooh, this could be fun candy when I'm in the mood. Um, it seems like it's well put together, well paced, engaging, always looking for an engaging fantasy book. So we'll see. And then one that I think is non-speculative and I saw it on Bethany's channel. I think recently she did a quarter one wrap up and this was one of her six stars of the year. So favorite of the year. And that is come and get it. I don't know too much about it, but again, in the spirit of, I wanted to have more non-speculative books on my radar. This could be interesting. And then the three books that I'm for sure, like really would love to read, if not in this next quarter before the end of the year that came out in the first quarter, one is Womb City. I own it. It's over there. I can see it right next to me. So that came out in the first half of the year. This is going to be like sci-fi horror. So also increases the sci-fi and horror I read. So that's good. Um, Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden, which has all of the mixed reviews, but I have an arc of it. So I would like to read that. <laughs> and then a nonfiction by an author I really like, Poverty um, by America. This is the same author who did Evicted, which I found unput downable and sad and depressing. Um, one of the reasons I like reading his nonfictions is I think he does a very good job in his writing of giving me the tools and the vocabulary to use when talking with other people about issues. Um, so that's one of the reasons I want to read it. I don't necessarily know how much I'll know, I'll learn, or if I'm just going to be in a rage fest, but I think it helps me find the vocabulary and syntax for how I can approach discussing these heavy, complex, I don't know, emotional topics Like people get very emotional about, you know, eviction and poverty and what they perceive about it versus what we actually know and all that. I think he's a good starting point and he does things in an engaging way. So I would like to pick that one up. So yeah, that's quarter one in a nutshell. I think I'm doing fairly good. I just need to challenge myself a bit more, but otherwise, you know, I think not, nothing too bad has happened. And I think we're pivoting just a slight bit. You know, it's like the frame is not quite level on the wall. So we're just twisting it a little and I'm okay with that. That's a good place to be. Um, how are your intentions, goals going for the first quarter? Do you not even care about that? Which is totally fine. If you just want to leave an emoji to let me know you're here. Oh, put down a spring flower because where I am right now, we're getting all the spring flowers. So that's, it's, you know, it's a very seasonal video. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.